Welcome to a short presentation on putting numbers into perspective, or more appropriately, talking about magnitude and scientific notation. So first, let's talk about what scientific notation is. This is a format of basically describing really, really large numbers or really, really small numbers. So it's um, kind of a shorthand for taking care of lots and lots of zeros. The format for scientific notation, for something to be truly in the scientific for, uh, notation format, is you have to have a non-zero number, just one, one non-zero decimal, uh, a decimal point, and then one more digit, right? So a non-zero digit, a decimal point, and one more digit, and then times some power of 10. So basically what happens here is you put the decimal place where this comma is, and then you figure out the power of 10 would be how many times it would take to move it back to where it was, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's why it's 10 to the ninth. Same thing here. <clears throat> this all these zeros with the 2, if you put the decimal right here after the 2 and make it 2.0, well, how many times do you have to move it to get it back? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And it's negative, right, because it had to move to the left. So that's simply scientific notation of you know what it means and how to use it. When we start talking about estimation, an order of magnitude estimate, specifies a broad range of values, usually from one or two powers of 10. Um, so you kind of want to be able to, so when you talk about estimating something, you want to at least be on the right order of magnitude. What that means is you don't know precisely what the number is, but it's somewhere in the hundreds or somewhere in the thousands, right? Or somewhere in the tens of thousands. But you wouldn't say it's somewhere between 100 and a million, right? That's too big. But somewhere in the hundreds, so somewhere between 100 and 900, that's not a bad, you know, range. So that's what it means to kind of be able to guess on an order of magnitude. So it's kind of this power of 10 idea. So here's an example. Is the total annual ice cream spending in the United States measured in thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, or billions of dollars? So we can reasonably guess that an average person has something like 50 servings of ice cream per year. That's, you know, almost one a week. So 50 servings per person, right, per year times a dollar per serving times 3.10 to the 8th power people because that's 300 million people that are in the United States. And we get basically $15 billion per year. <clears throat> so that is a, a gross estimate, right? We estimate everything. But based on this assumption of 50 servings per ice cream of ice cream per year and a dollar per serving it puts us on the order of magnitude of billions that means we're spending billions of dollars per year on ice cream okay so that's what we're just talking about understanding the magnitude of of numbers so um some energy comparisons right um, energy released by a metabolism of one average candy bar is 1 times 10 to the 6 joules, right? Joules are really, really small. Energy needed for one hour of running. Well, 4 times as much, 4 times 10 to the 6, right? Energy released by burning 1 liter of oil, 1.2 times 10 to the 7th. So 10 times as much as the candy bar, right? Because we're, uh, we're, you know, it's basically 1 to 1.2, but we go from 10 to, point, 10 to the 6th to 10 to the 7th. So it's 10, 10 times as big. So these order of magnitudes, or these powers of 10 tell you on what um, order of magnitude we are, how much bigger something is, right? Annual energy generated uh, generation of the sun, 10 to the 34th, right? Versus 10 to the 6th, that's a whole lot more energy. So these magnitudes, where it gives us meaning by seeing power. So that's why scientific notation is good, because we can see really quickly how much bigger something is than something else. So here's an example. <clears throat> Compare the U.S. population to the world population and U.S. energy consumption to the world energy consumption. What does this tell you about energy uses by Americans? Well, the world population is roughly 7 billion and the U.S. population is roughly 300 million. So the U.S. to the world, right, 300 million is 3 times 10 to the 8th. This is 7 times 10 to the 9th, which gives us 3 tenths times 10 to the negative 1 because we have 8 of them up here and 9 of them up here. So 8 minus 9 is negative 1. So you do 3 sevenths, and then you move the decimal place 1 over, and it's 0.043. So we're basically 4.3% of the world's population. So there it is right there.
4%. Now, the United States uses about 1 over 5.7 or about 18% of the world's energy. So that is American Jews more than four times as much energy per person as the world's average, right? Because we're only 4% of the population, but we use 18% of the world's energy. So that tells us that we're energy hogs when it comes to the world. Another version of giving meaning to numbers is perspective through scaling, right? If they say one centimeter equals one kilometer, then you're looking on this uh map and you you measure out a centimeter and you know that equals a kilometer well you need to know what a kilometer means right for those of us in the united states a kilometer is pretty close to a mile and of course a centimeter is about a half of an inch so how about the distance from the earth to the sun it's about 150 million kilometers right uh, can you really fathom that i mean you, we just know it's a long way the diameter of the sun is about 1.4 million kilometers and the equatorial diameter of the earth is about 12,760 kilometers so we can put these numbers in perspective by using a scale model of the solar system with a 1 to 10 billion dollars sorry 10 billion scale <clears throat> so the scaled down earth to sun distance the actual distance divided by 10 to the 10th because that's what 10 billion is so 1.5 times 10 to the 8th, that's 150 million in scientific notation, divide by 10 to the 10th. And we get 1.5 times 10 to the negative 2 kilometers. And then we can do that times um, 10 to the cubed to change it to meters, because there's 1,000 meters in a kilometer. So we basically end up getting 15 meters. So now we've converted that big distance to 15 meters. And we can think of, okay, so the distance from the Earth, the sun is 15 meters. That's something I can visualize because a meter is basically a yard, right? So that's like 15 yards. <clears throat> so note that in the last step, we converted the distance from kilometers to meters because it's easier to understand 15 meters than it is to understand 0 0.015 kilometers, right? So if you multiply this by 1,000, you're moving it three times, one, two, three. And that's how we get 15 meters. <clears throat> now we can do the scaled sun and earth diameter similarly. So the sun diameter divided by 10 to the fourth, right? We get this 10 to the negative 4. So then we got to do down to centimeters because it's so small. And we get 14 centimeters. Do the Earth's and it gets 1.27 millimeters. So now you can see how minuscule things are, right? The Earth is 1 millimeter. The Sun is 14 centimeters. Remember, a centimeter is 10 times as big. So it would be 10 times as big to get up to 1.2 centimeters. And then we have to multiply that by 10 to get to 12 centimeters, which is basically what the sun is. So the sun is 100 times the size of the Earth. And then you could think of you know, a centimeter as being 14 centimeters is like you know 7 inches. And as we said, the distance was 15 meters. So you can start to see these... Um, get an idea of the scale of these big things. Okay, our last example. One way to put one billion dollars in perspective is to ask a question like, how many people can you employ with one billion dollars per year? And let's suppose that employees receive a very high average salary of a hundred thousand dollars, and that cost a business an extra hundred thousand dollars per year in overhead for each employee, uh, cost for the office space, computer services, health insurance benefits, and all that stuff. So, total cost of employee is therefore two hundred thousand dollars. So, one billion would allow a business to hire. Well, you take one billion, divide it by two hundred thousand dollars per employee. One billion is ten to the ninth. This is two times ten to the fifth. So we basically get 5 times 10 to the 3rd, or $1 billion per year could support a workforce of 5,000 employees. So you start to see how big a $1 billion is. We can also, another way to put it, is to um, how many different numbers can be, um, even when they sound similar, right, million, billion, trillion. Suppose you become a sports star and earn a salary of one million. How long would it take you to earn one billion? Well, we simply divide one billion by your salary of one million, and we can see that that's 
1,000 times or 1,000 years, right? So uh, a billion is a thousand times bigger than a million. That's pretty big. All right, that's it for this 